right, hello again, everybody. Welcome back to Airbus 320 Tech Talk. What do all those buttons do? Thank you again so much for joining me. The topic of today's discussion is going to be the door and oxygen page on the A320 flight deck status display screen there. But before we get started, as always, if you like what you're hearing and seeing, please go ahead and hit the like button, hit subscribe, leave comments down below. All that kind of good stuff just helps me keep this channel moving forward and hopefully keeps it fun, engaging, and exciting for everybody that's watching out there. So thank you if you've already done so. I'll go ahead and bring up the slide for today. So as I mentioned, the, the door oxygen page here, there's a couple pieces of data that we go to pretty regularly in our day-to-day -day operation as we're out there flying the airplane. Uh, so I'll, I'll point out a couple of those high points, but just to, you know, the, the first um, you know, thing to mention here is just you know, very simply, this is just a graphical depiction of what the status is of all the doors on the airplane are doing at a given point in time. Now, of course, this photo that I had taken, we're up at cruise altitude, so everything is all closed up. Everything is showing green. All our slides are armed, of course, as we would expect to see. But um, there are, of course, several different variations on this graphic that you're going to you know, see depending on what's happening. We're on the ground, of course, as you open up different things. These, these colors will turn to amber, for example, if one of the doors open. We'll actually get some labeling that appears on the side here. And I, I got um, one of those awesome super duper Airbus graphics here out of the FCOM here that I can just show you to, to point that out a little bit more, or just kind of see the, or, or show you the options that you might be seeing on this page, um, as I mentioned. But you know, just you know, very simply, you know, the, the various things are, are labeled um, as they pertain to the specific openings on the airplane. And um, something also that's important to make mention of here is that every single one of these these doors here is part of the pressure vessel of the airplane. So, of course, this is also important in the sense that, you know, we're up there flying around. I mean, we need to make sure that all the doors are closed up, of course, to preserve um, the cabin pressure, obviously. Uh, and if there was some sort of, you know, situation where a door was open, I mean, this is such a rare thing uh, that, that would happen uh, because of the, you know, the plug type nature or the way these do doors are designed. And, you know, it would have to be some kind of catastrophic thing going on. Uh, that would that would cause this but you know it's just you know part of that um, like I said one thing just to, to express to you to have have this understanding about um, all of these indications here and why it's important to us I suppose to, to have an indication uh, to begin with or you know part of the reason anyways that we want to know what's going on we're flying the airplane of course as well as we're on the ground but uh, like I said you can you can pause the uh, the presentation here and just take a look at it, you know if you want to look in a little bit more detail about what each and every one of the doors is here and obviously you know the, the primary ones that we see opening up and closing every day are the, the main cabin door and the cargo doors on the side of the airplane. But uh, occasionally you'll see these other access doors being open if there's like maintenance around the airplane, you know, doing some sort of work. You know, it's, it's something that we might see, of course, and, and take notice of when we're on the ground there. So uh, that's uh, pretty much all I had to tell you about the doors. Um, it, the other uh, important indication that we come to every time we pre-flight the airplane, actually, uh, my carrier just changed this. They they wanted us to now check this when we get back on the ground every after every flight operation. It's just you know we're checking all the quantities of the things on the airplane that might need servicing in between flights. So the the cockpit oxygen one is a really important one here that we pay attention to. So first of all, uh, just to to remind you that the cockpit oxygen indicator here that. That is actually the PSI of the actual bottles that we have, you know, that reside on board the airplane that is there dedicated just for the flight crew uh, for breathing purposes, of course. You know, if we were in some sort of emergency situation, the cabin depressurized and we needed to have good oxygen to, you know, feed our bodies and, you know, keep functioning and all this kind of stuff. Uh, just I wanted to make that point once again that this oxygen pressure is, is just specifically... Um, it's it's that pressure, like I said, of those bottles that are there in reserve for the flight deck. Now remember that differs from the, the canister type setup for the, the passengers in the back room. You have that overhead type of situation where there's an individual canister for each seat uh, position there. Uh, so those were, of course, we, we don't take a measure on PSI um, for those, you know, that part of the oxygen system there. So I just wanted to draw that apart. Uh, in your minds if there was any confusion just to let you know that there is that line in the sand but you know specifically you know most days when we come on the airplane we look down we see a nice green number and we're like okay you know, everything <laughs> everything's all well and good we're happy to uh, go off and fly but uh, occasionally you will see a little amber uh, like a hockey stick or like a half box looking thing that shows up underneath here and that just shows us that the the psi has dropped uh, below a thousand pounds or, or i'm sorry a thousand psi when we're on the ground and that just it's, it's a flag to let us know that um, our ability to carry flight deck observers or jump seaters might be compromised. And there's actually like a table that you go in and look at. And you, you, you can actually 
draw some sort of uh, interpolation, you know, as, as far as like how much pressure is in the bottle, you know, what's the outside air temperature at this point in time doing? And you can kind of get a gauge to see like exactly where you're at in the grand scheme of things, if you're okay to carry your jump suit or if you're not. Uh, so, you know, kind of a rare thing that we, we actually have to reference this and, and pull out those tables to, uh, to take a look at this. But just, you know, one thing that, that is fairly typical that you'll see is that, that little hockey stick that appears, um, you know, like we said, if we're, if we're below 1,000 PSI uh, when we're on the ground there. So that's, um, oh, and then, of course, uh, just the last one here, the vertical speed here, if you're curious about that. You see the vertical speed indication on a few of the other screens that we've already talked about. But once again, this is just the rate of climb or descent that the, the, uh, the cabin is doing at this general point in time. Uh, so, you know, here we are, of course, we're cruising around. Everything is all stable and mellow. So, of course, we have a, a zero foot per minute reading on the vertical speed there. So, like I said, pretty simple, straightforward stuff there with the door and the oxygen page. So hopefully that uh, answers uh, those questions that uh, you might have had about that. So um, with that being said, I'll go ahead and jump into the Q&A section uh, that I had set for today. So I had a, a viewer uh, by the name of uh, Zachary Gaming. So first of all, Zachary, thank you so much for tuning into the channel. I appreciate you watching and uh, appreciate you writing in. Uh, but he has a question. Um, uh, how does the... Um, I have a question about the fuel. Uh, the Airbus 319 and 320 and the 321, how much do they consume per hour in, uh, in fuel? Now, um, a lot like the, the question that I fielded a few days ago on, um, I think we were talking about uh, something else with the, uh, yeah, the fuel imbalancing. We were going over that. Uh, Zachary, th this one, uh, there is a very easy uh, answer for this one. And there's also a very technical answer for this one as well. So, you know, first to start off with, with the technical explanation here for you, um, there, of course, is charts that we can go to in the books that, that show all the fuel flow for, um, you know, any given state of flight, any, you know, position we are in the atmosphere, the weight of the airplane, how fast we're going, you know, all these sorts of things, uh, they can greatly vary the amount of fuel flow that the airplane is using at a given point in time. So, you know, by example, you know, we're taxiing the airplane around, we're probably burning, I think, you know, somewhere around like 500 or, or somewhere around there uh, pounds per hour per engine. Uh, when we're just, you know, on the ground with the, the engine at idle, but, you know, on the ground, let's say we're leaving from a sea level airport, you know, I think the fuel flows are up above uh, 10,000 pounds per hour, you know, for each engine. Uh, so you can see there's, there's quite a bit of a range in between there. So a lot of it, of course, you know, right off the bat has to do with what thrust setting we're operating the engine at. But, you know, once again, remember, you know, as we go up in the atmosphere, the jet engines actually become very very much more efficient, almost exponentially, I think, as we, we go up higher and higher. So, you know, the, the fuel burn um, is, of course, changing as we go up, um, you know, climbing once again. Uh, not only that, as you're burning off weight of the airplane in the sense of the fuel being burned off, I mean, the airplane is getting lighter, so it's more efficient. So we're requiring less fuel burn to, you know, keep the plane aloft and, you know, get it flying or keep it flying as fast as we want it to go. So, you know, there's, there's just all sorts of considerations, and there's not really like an easy... Um, you know, straight up technical answer to give you as far as like a number, because um, I, I think you get the point by now, it just, it varies so much. But uh, the last thing to leave you off with is, is kind of the simple answer. And this is one of the ones, you know, that we're, we're taught in ground school uh, early on. And I kind of mentioned it in one of the earlier videos, but a very, very rudimentary number that you can use uh, to apply across all the airplanes, you know, with the, the Airbus of this size anyways, is about 6,000 pounds per hour. So that's kind of like an average number. Um, you know, of course, that's still, you know, it depends a lot on, um, you know, what we're doing with the airplane. But, you know, very generally speaking, that's kind of our fallback number that we can apply to, you know, most every, you know, flight scenario. Say, okay, you know, if we got, you know, we're trying to fly an hour from, you know, point A to point B, we're going to burn about 6,000 pounds per hour. If we're going to fly two hours, we're going to be burning about 12,000, somewhere in there. So um, just a very basic thing uh, to, to point you to there is, uh, you know, just the only thing I wanted to mention there. So I, I hope that all makes sense to you. If you guys have any more questions about any of this stuff on this page or uh, anything else, uh, please leave them down in the comment section. I'll do my best to field them for you. So hope everybody's having a great day. Hope you're all staying safe and we'll talk again real soon.